Hey there, it's Liz from No Trace. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a super cute, scrappy version of the Sew Talk drawstring bag pattern. Now, the pattern for this bag, I'm linking to it below this video, so go ahead and snag it, and let's jump in. The first thing that you need if you wanna make a scrappy drawstring bag is a whole bunch of scraps of fabric, and what I did was picked one sort of center fabric and then I used the colors on here to help pick out the other colors of my scrap fabric. That way the bag doesn't feel too busy. I'm gonna be using organic cotton batting to line my bag. If you have interfacing, you could use that up as well, but organic cotton batting is a nice, sustainable, eco-friendly alternative to traditional fabric interfacing. I'm also gonna be using a couple of yards of organic cotton cording, and I'm putting a link in the description box below this video if you want to, to use the same all-natural cording. And I'm gonna be adding a no trace tag to my bag. If you wanna get some of your own tags with your own name or brand on there, I'm gonna also link to where I get my tags in the description box below this video. And the pattern that I'm using, like I mentioned, is the Sew Talk drawstring bag pattern. It comes in a lot of different sizes and I am linking to the pattern below this video if you wanna snag it for yourself. The very first step is to find a small scrap to use as the center of your outer panel. And it doesn't really matter what shape it is, I am gonna start with this little odd shape. What I'm gonna do next is find another scrap of fabric that is large enough to connect to at least one of the sides. And I'm gonna put them with the right sides together and I'm gonna sew them with a straight line, just ignoring any of these sort of odd shapes on my piece. All right, I'm gonna be starting my seam right near the top of my first scrap of fabric. And I'm gonna be following this straight line with a quarter inch seam allowance. And I don't usually backstitch when I do these uh, crazy quilts, but you could if you want to. Okay, first seam is done. You could cut off any extra material if you have a purpose for it, or you can just leave it in place, which was what I'm gonna do and now I'm gonna open up my piece and I have my iron and I'm just going to press it and then it's time for the next piece. So again, I'm gonna find something from my pile that's not too huge, but is large enough to go from point to point on my new piece. So I am gonna be using this little guy. And again, I'm gonna be starting at the edge of my first piece and using about a quarter of an inch seam allowance and follow the straight edge of my blue piece. Just like that. Now that these are joined, again, I'm gonna open it up and press with my iron and figure out my next straight edge that I wanna work towards. And I am going to be sewing this side of my original piece because I haven't sewn anything onto here yet. So I'm getting another fabric that I haven't used yet and I'm gonna sew from this top edge straight down again with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, this time I am gonna trim a little bit because I could use this piece in um, a future project because it's big enough to work with. And again, I'm just going to open up my working piece and press it with the iron. Oops. And again, I could also trim off this part, but I'm gonna be following this straight line when I trim it. 
And now I'm ready to add on to this side of my working piece. I kept adding on pieces of fabric to all the different sides, sort of working my way around my original piece until my working piece was big enough for the pattern size that I was working with. So I needed it to be at least 12 and a half by 12 and a half inches. All right, my piece is large enough for my bag now. So what I wanna do next is cut it to the exact size for the drawstring bag. The version that I'm doing, it's 12 and a half by 12 and a half. So I'm gonna go ahead and find that find that square on here and go ahead and cut this to size. Now I went through all those same steps again and made a second panel that's also 12 and a half by 12 and a half. And so now we're ready to quilt these onto the cotton batting. All right, over at the machine, I am going to quilt the um, quilted panel onto the cotton batting with just really simple straight lines of stitches. And I have bumped my stitch length up to the longest length, so it's at five millimeters. And I just wanna line up the edges of the fabric with the batting. And I'm gonna do a row of stitches about every three quarters of an inch. And I just wanna make sure to start at the, stop, at, start at the very top and go all the way down. All right, so you can sort of see how those really long stitches look. Now again, I am just going to start about three quarters of an inch away from that row, and again, go straight down. And I'm gonna do that for this whole panel and for the other whole panel. So I'll be right back. Okay, I finished quilting both of the panels for the outside of my Sotok drawstring bag. And I wanna do a quick straightening up because sometimes when you quilt, um, it can kind of change the shape of the panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and tidy up the edges, make sure they're still 12 and a half by 12 and a half. Now uh, that both of these panels are straightened out, I'm ready to attach the casings to the top edge of each of the panels. Now you'll, you'll wanna check the pattern, the Sotok drawstring pattern to figure out the size of the casing for the bag that you are making. And once you have that, all you have to do is fold it in half lengthwise and line up the raw edge of the casing with the raw edge of the raw top edge of your bag panel, and then you'll want to center it on the panel and pin it in place. Okay, so I've pinned the casings in place. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and stitch them on with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. After the casings are sewn in place, I'm gonna go ahead and put the two outer panels right sides together and I'm gonna be pinning them along four si uh, three sides, not four, but I also wanna add a little no trace tag in between the layers. This is optional, of course. I'm gonna put it about three inches from the top edge. You could also put a little decorative loop in between the layers here if you wanted, or you could put a sturdy strap coming out, um, it, would be, it would be going in, a sturdy strap if you want to be able to carry your bag around with a strap. I'm not gonna do that, I'm just adding a tag, and then I'm gonna add a couple more pins on these three sides. Okay, my outer layers are pinned together, so next I'm gonna grab the inner layers of the drawstring bag. These are the same measurements as the outer layers, so depending on the size that you make, you're gonna to wanna to cut some more fabric to that size. And I'm gonna pin these together around three sides as well. And then we'll take these to the machine and stitch everything together. I'm gonna to be using a 3 8 inch seam allowance, but if you are 
a little bit newer to sewing, you could absolutely use a wider seam allowance and that'll just make your bag a little bit smaller. And I'm gonna do a back stitch at the beginning and when I get to the other top edge. And I'm just gonna take my time and make sure I get all my layers in my seam. Finished the seams for the inner layer and the outer layer. And whenever I'm working with a sort of quilty piece like the outer layers, I wanna make take a moment and double check that I caught all the fabric in my seam because this, when you're doing a sort of crazy quilt, things can be a little bit uneven or a little bit crooked. So just take a minute and double check that your seam looks good, and it does. In the next step, I'm gonna go ahead and box the corners on the inside and the outer layers of my bag. And the way I like to do that, this is also different from the pattern, I'm gonna draw a one inch square on each of the bottom corners. I'm drawing the one inch square on the seam, not on the raw edge. Once I have a one inch square on each corner, I'm just going to, on each bottom corner, I'm gonna open up the bags, open up the outer layers, get my hand in there, and open up this corner so that we get a nice pointy triangle at the end of the corner. And then I wanna take a minute and feel with my fingers and look that the seam here lines up from one side to the other and that the fabric on the inside is laying nice and flat. And then I'm gonna put a pin right there to hold this corner in place. And I'm gonna repeat that on this side too. Get my hand in there open up that corner, make sure that my seam is laying the same direction for both corners. And then I'm just kind of feeling with my fingers and again, get a pin and hold this corner in place. And then I'll repeat that for the inner layers. At the machine, I'm gonna be stitching just to the inside of my chalk mark and I wanna make sure to do a back stitch. And I have to kind of envision the last little bit of line here, but it's not that hard to do. So I'm just doing a straight line all the way down this corner with a back stitch at the beginning and the end. Okay, all the corners are boxed. And I realized looking at my other drawstring bag, I think I might've boxed these a little bit smaller than the pattern recommends, but that is okay and I'm just gonna leave them. So check your pattern to figure out exactly the size of your corners. Now, another thing I do that's a little different than the pattern is I don't cut the corners off. I usually leave the corners on my bag unless I have a specific reason to cut the corners off and do something with them. But as of right now, I have too many scraps to work with, so I'm not making more scraps. I'm leaving the corners in place. I'm turning the outer layers right side out, but I'm gonna leave my inner layers wrong side out, and I'm gonna put my outer layer inside my inner layer. Then I wanna take a minute and make sure that my side seams are lined up with each other. I know it's kinda hard to tell with this crazy quilty style, but I can tell this is where they should be touching, and then I'm just gonna pin them right there, and I'm gonna repeat that on this side. So again, find those side seams, make sure they're touching each other, and pin. Now at the machine, I'm going to be sewing these two layers together, but I wanna make sure to leave an opening over on one of the sides that's probably about four inches, so I can turn this whole thing right side out. So I'm gonna start about two inches away from one of the sides and I'm gonna sew with about half inch seam allowance. So a little bit underneath the seam that I created when I sewed the casing on. And I definitely wanna backstitch at the beginning and the end of my stitches. The bag is almost done. I'm so excited. Okay, I'm gonna go into the opening and pull the outer layer through the hole. And I wanna do it gently. 
You could leave your opening bigger than four inches if you want, but if, I, if I'm patient, four inches is enough space for the bag. And then we just wanna turn that inner layer all the way around. And you can see the bag is really coming together. It's almost done. So push the inside in. And we just need to do a top stitch up here around this edge to give the bag more of a finished look, but also mainly to close up this opening. And again, this is how I like to do it. But the pattern recommends um, working through a hole on the lining, so you could definitely sew it this way. So let's take a minute and I just wanna iron this top edge and make sure that the casing is laying nice and flat all the way around. Okay, I finished ironing this top edge and I just wanna take a minute for the opening to make sure it's folded really well and I definitely wanna pin it closed so that I get it in my next and last seam. Woohoo, almost done. I'm gonna do my top stitching from the inside out and I wanna start over on the side where it'll be less noticeable. And I'm gonna go ahead and go all the way around. I'm gonna go with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Take my time, go nice and slow. Last step, can you believe it? Okay, we are going to get our cording, which I've actually cut into two pieces that are about a yard long each. And I'm going to clip the cording onto the safety pin. And by the way, if you're still watching, give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment and tell me. You're still, you're still watching, you saw the safety pin. Safety pin action, just say safety pin in the comments. Okay, I'm gonna thread the safety pin with the cord attached through both sides of the casing. So I'll be right back. Okay, I got the string all the way through both casings and now I'm just gonna tie the ends of the string of the cording together with an overhand knot. And then I'm gonna repeat those steps with the other string. I'm gonna start them on the other side and have them come out on this side. Once you tie both of the knots in the rope, your drawstring bag is done. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. And if you want to make a even tinier version of this bag, I'm gonna link to a video right here. So check it out.